Last Friday night, millions of us watched in horror the videos of Memphis police officers beating 29 year old Tyree Nichols. It brought up emotions, particularly for black people, that many of us still can't shake almost a week later. So mental health expert from Memorial Health, Mary Jo Horton, is here to help us unpack uh, this latest example of what many of us are calling, I've been calling black trauma. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, all right, so I didn't want to watch the video, Mary Jo. I didn't want to do it. I was on vacation at the time. I was with my mom. We did wind up watching it when it was released. I did that in part because of my job and mm -hmm. you know I need to see that in part because I wanted to bear witness to yeah. it. I thought that was important. But there are some people who just couldn't watch it. Right. And can't watch it. Absolutely. So talk about this thing, you call it vicarious trauma. Absolutely. And a lot of people are avoiding that. Yeah. So when you're watching something so violent mm -hmm. and you're watching something so horrific, it starts to trigger the brain the same way you would be triggered if you were having a direct trauma response. Mm -hmm. The images get coded, our automatic nervous system starts to go. The things that happen in trauma when we don't feel safe and we feel under attack also can happen when we're watching and we're witnessing those same videos. You can have a physical response. You can to have that. a physical response. People yeah. talk about the same response nausea, headache, shaking, sweating, mm -hmm. feelings of terror and unsafety can absolutely happen by watching and witnessing that. And certainly crying, but not just crying, you it's, know, like you said, right. much more than that. Can absolutely. Be. You know, it's, you know, there's crying when there's sadness. You can cry when you're happy. And these kinds of cries, it's crying as your body is not feeling like it's able to connect with safety. Yes. Okay. That is a, and that's a deep cry. Yes. All right. So the video is a reminder for many of us in the black community. Mm -hmm that we do not feel safe, mm -hmm. we do not feel protected in our own communities mm -hmm. and just out in the world. Mm -hmm. We call it driving while black, mm -hmm. living while black, mm -hmm. bird watching while black. Mm -hmm. What can that do to you living with that feeling over a long period of time? So what happens to your body and your mental health mm -hmm. is you never get a sense of feeling relaxed yeah. Your brain is in a constant state of survival, hypervigilance, yeah. you know, thoughts that are, sometimes people even feel like they don't know whether to tr trust their thoughts are real or not, or what's happening or not, mm. because they're living in an environment and what they feel and they know to be true, they're being told is not really happening. And so it's hard for the brain to even navigate. So you almost get a lot of same symptoms of PTSD, yeah. of that hypervigilance, the over awareness and not being able to settle down. It can have a detrimental effect and you see long term negative physical health outcomes. Yeah, um, we you we've talked about gaslighting mm -hmm. and you brought up something where we're seeing something, but we're, t we're told that that's not a thing. Right. Black people as a whole. There's a lot of gaslighting for us because mm -hmm. we try to talk about our experiences and it gets downplayed. Right. That's traumatic. It's traumatic and what yeah. happens is at some point people then give up on trying to have conversation. Yeah. You know, everything that we talk about, the power of the conversation. Mm -hmm. Well, if I keep trying to talk about my experience and what my feedback is, is that it, that's being told is not happening, at some point people become disenfranchised from even engaging in conversation. Yeah, so people need to really be mindful of that. When someone's telling you their truth. Yes. Do not downplay that. Right. Or deny them that. Yeah. All right. So we want to, you know, at least try and have some optimism here. Mm. But I got to be honest, I don't have a lot of hope mm. when it comes to this issue. And I, you know, I hate to even say that out loud publicly for yeah. people to hear because you're supposed to have hope. I don't have a lot. But you say there are some things that we can do mm -hmm. to sort of navigate this and find growth and positive impact. Yes, absolutely. I think that even being able to say that is so powerful. I'm glad that you said it because mm -hmm. validation of where people are are the biggest things that connect us. Yep. Can I feel validated in how I feel? Because mm -hmm. once we get to validation, now we can talk about how to use pain, anger, mm -hmm. sadness, and mm -hmm. fear in a way that drives connection and change. What is, you know, disheartening is when people's sadness and be pain, they get stuck in it. Yes, I've been stuck in it. So how do we find ways to continue to connect? 
how I think this conversation, you, you know, and, and sharing and sitting in spaces with folks, even yeah. though it's uncomfortable, yeah. those are how we continue to in, it reunite hope because the conversation's what's powerful. Continuing to connect, um, social media. Mm. I, that's not a great way to do that, is it? No, and we've talked about this before. People yeah. think that I'm communicating with you if I comment on something you've posted. Well, I'm not. I'm putting on a persona and I'm putting something out there uh -huh. that I might not say to your face. Connection is looking at somebody, hearing someone's voice, being able to feel, or not feel, because we I, I think that that's the wrong term. Yeah. I, I can't understand how people feel. What I can do is I can sit in a space of being able to be emotionally present with mm -hmm. somebody. Mm -hmm. And so how do we find ways to be emotionally present mm -hmm. so that we can truly have a space of trying to heal yeah. in terms of learning? You know, the whole idea of validating experience is to learn what somebody else is going through. And you know, I think that applies, and we've got to wrap up here, we could talk about this the <laughs> whole show, but I think that applies to not just this situation with black people, that applies with LGBTQ right. people, people of different religions, to be in that space yes. of learning and being open to hearing their experience. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't have to know and understand what somebody's experience is like, yeah. but what I can do is I can sit in validation Mm -hmm. I can be emotionally present and I can ask with a genuine concern of understanding. Mary Jo, thank you so much you. for coming and having this conversation. I know we pivoted at the last minute it's to okay. do this. We're going to continue the conversation about the trauma of watching that video tomorrow um, where I'm going to have a group of black mothers come in and talk about why they could or could not watch that video. So tune in tomorrow uh, for that. Tina?